uh, most of the patients really loved me. Mm -hmm. Just a very funny story. One day, mm -hmm. I was wearing a wig. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there was this man who was really, 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 really old. Mm -hmm. And he had never spoken to anybody mm -hmm. for over six months. Everybody thought he was going to die. Mm -hmm. So I used to just go, you just go, you, if you clean them, you brush their teeth, all that. And he never spoke, he never spoke to the nurses, he never had no family visiting him, he had no doctors visiting him. So one day I took him some food, no, I went to clean his room, mm -hmm. and as I was bending this way, my wig fell down. <laughs> uh <-huh>. The guy <laughs> laughed. <laughs> Imagine this a guy who's not spoken for over six months. Yeah. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to DCN Jazz. It's 2021. Karibuni sana. We are happy to be back, guys. We missed you. I know it's been like a month. Yeah, a month or so, yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, it, it was a brief hiatus. Hi, what? <laughs> New York. What are those? <laughs> New York words. <laughs> what does that mean, Mercy? I don't give a <laughs> damn, baby. Oh, this is how we are coming back into 2021. Yeah? We don't give a damn. We don't really care. <laughs> exactly. We hear that song. You know what you're talking about. As always, Another fresh episode of the Overcomer series. Don't think you forgot about it. Yeah. We're about to bring you more amazing people this year because it's 2021. Yes. We and do. we don't give a damn. Do we? Uh, no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> we don't come to 2021. <laughs> yes, so. Yes, but I give on. a damn about you. You do? <laughs> yeah, about you thank too. You, thank you, thank you. We also give a, a damn about you guys because, yes. man, I think the support has been immense, right? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, like we said last year when we started this, we were not very sure about what we were doing, but now I think we. We are pretty confident about what we're doing, but basically because of the sport that you've given us. Uh, we are getting there, we are getting yeah. there. Asante Thank Isana. You. Thank you guys, Kama Kawaida, we love yeah. you. Mm. And we have a lot of more nice things lined up for 2021, so Absolutely. let's do this. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe on this channel right now. Uh, Share, comment, yeah, and all Pause that. Pause the video, subscribe yeah. first. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I think our guest needs no introduction. As you can see her, she's here in all her glory. Marcy Atis. Yes. Drum rolls, drum rolls. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. And hope we're going to have a, a nice time today. Oh, I can't uh, wait. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be here in Nairobi, in Kenya, in Marcy. Love when you find her. Finally. Huh? You guys. Let this be a lesson. Who can you touch a footer? Who touch a footer? We start giving motivational speeches. Yeah. Think and you shall find. Mood chapter twenty four verse seven. Mood two for seven. Yes, yes, but I'm really happy that we finally got a hold of you. I'm so happy. Thanks yes, for coming to this year, Jazz. We are so, so happy to be here. You're so welcome. Yes, and uh, we can't wait to hear what you have for us today. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, Karibu sana. Asante. Thank you, Dizzy. Uh, like we told it. Uh, the Wakama series that we are doing. Okay. And uh, it's basically where we just share stories of people who've gone through what we think are maybe pretty difficult circumstances. Right. And they've made it. Right. And maybe use their, as their story as a way to motivate other people to actually see that. Uh, yeah, it's really important to continue to share the story yes. over and over and over again because uh, sometimes it can lift somebody up. Absolutely. You know, feeling absolutely. down absolutely. or, you know. Mm -hmm. Somebody wants to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. I'm just happy to share my story with you again because yes. I've been getting very positive reports Absolutely. and it's encouraging people. And it's better we just continue. It's mm. good. Right. Maybe just to say how, like, I think I told you this before. Mm -hmm. Hearing your story for me was a perspective changer. Right. Because first we saw your song, I Don't Give a Damn. It was <laughs> yeah. such a big song, it was a meme. Yeah. You shared it. Yeah. Then you had your story, then you were like, oh, wait. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Because I think now it sort of like gave a background into your life. Right. And why you actually don't really give a damn. Right. Before then you were just, I don't give a damn. Right. But now we actually know why you don't give a damn. Yes, Maybe you can understand. Just tell us a bit about the, story, about the song. Like you're telling me the story is actually born out of your life experiences. <laughs> yes. The, yeah. the song, I don't give a damn, mm -hmm. is born out of my life experiences. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the way, when the, first, uh, when the song first released, mm -hmm. 
many people are really insulting me. And I was just sharing with yeah. you that I actually cried mm -hmm. for about two days. Mm -hmm. And then I talked to the friend, and the friend was like, you know what? Mm -hmm. This is the time to really practice what you're singing. <laughs> this is the time to stop giving a damn about the negative people and the haters. Mm -hmm. So I'm just um, really excited. The song was motivated mm -hmm. to just uh, shut down all the haters and mm -hmm. the negativity and to roll with the positive vibes. I was telling you before that I wrote the song um, mm -hmm. because uh, I used to have some friends, mm -hmm. in quotes, mm -hmm. who would talk about me. And then this person would come and tell me, so and so said so and so about you. And so and so said so and so. And I would be like, what about you? What did you say? Mm -hmm. So that was, what about you? What did you say? I don't want to know. I don't give a damn, damn. <laughs> That's like the rolling in 2021. Yeah. We have backstabbers for friends. Right. We don't really care. Yeah, and the song is really you? trending in Nigeria right now. Really? really? Yes. Eh? Big people, the movie actors in Nigeria are really posting the song everywhere. Wow. Nice. Wow. Very wow. exciting. Wow. And you, you're really enjoying Mercy. You're really enjoying Thank Actually, you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm really happy to, to hear that. Maybe just now a bit of that journey. Like, mm -hmm. what made you actually think you could sing? Or what drove you to that? Mm -hmm. And even maybe after the backlash that you received after the first video. Right. Guys were like, hey, who is this? You told me they were saying you don't know how to dress. Yeah. Your makeup. Your makeup is Oh, off. they were saying I'm ugly. <laughs> I have a party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm wearing bikini. I don't know how to dress. I don't know how to sing. Uh -huh. um, I, you know, I don't have a voice. Just the, so many negative mm -hmm. things. And what made me to continue singing mm -hmm. Is the fact that you don't really know me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that I can sing mm -hmm. and I'm gonna continue singing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no matter what you say. I started singing when I was young, uh -huh. uh, somewhere called Uranga SDA Church. Mm -hmm. And I was singing with the adventurers, with the pathfinders. The pathfinders. Yeah, yeah, with the youth, wow. marching to the camp meetings uh. and the weeks of prayer. So I continued singing in high school. Mm -hmm. I sang with the choral choir at mm -hmm. Nia Girls High School. Wow. And then Baraton University, I sang with the outreach, mm -hmm. Baraton Outreach mm -hmm. Choir. Mm -hmm. And so I started singing alone after. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So yeah, music is after in your the blood. US. Or music music is, is in my blood. Music is me. <laughs> and you have a new song out, actually. Yes, I have a new song out. Uh -huh. Let it fly. It's called Let It Fly. It's doing really well. Yeah, let's do it. Uh -huh. <laughs> it goes like this. Uh -huh. People always gonna talk about you every day, every day, every day. Hey. I know it hurts, I know you're a human being, it's easier said than done, but baby, let it fly, let it fly, let it fly, let it, just go check it out on my YouTube, that's just God, let it fly, let it fly. Her YouTube is Marcy Atiet, Atis or Atiet? Marcy Atis. Marcy Atis. Yeah, yes. many people say Marcy Otis, but it's Atis. Atis is just a short form for Atieno. Mm. Yeah, so that's okay. the new song. All right. And then Another one is cooking right now, mm. so that will be a surprise. Oh, wow. you have another one? Yes. You're waiting for this They surprises. are never going to end. <laughs> right. <laughs> mm. Wow, wow. Um, and, well, a very important or a very strong part of your story mm -hmm. is your journey in the U.S. Right. Maybe you could tell us about that, how you got there mm -hmm. and what happened. Oh, my God. Um, let me just start, like, when I was young. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a polygamous family. Mm -hmm. This is something I haven't shared much, mm -hmm. but uh, my dad had two wives. Mm -hmm. And so there was always this uh, um, hate between well, first wife families. and yeah, yeah. and and, and um, my stepmom used mm -hmm. to mock my mom and say, all your kids are going to America and my kids are just staying here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And I used to say, I'm, I will be the first one to go to America. Mm -hmm. Because they were saying it as a mockery. Mm -hmm. So I used to say, I will be the first one to go to America. One day I will go to America. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when the opportunity came, I thought it was like the biggest thing. Ah. You know, uh, going to America was like going to heaven. The land of milk and honey. Yeah, milk yeah. and honey. The American yeah. dream. Right, no more suffering, no more pain, no more tears, no more death. Akuna kusota. And in fact, I remember even I remember even saying, ah, uh, still I find a matatu, you know. Yeah. I will never get on a matatu, I will Again. never get on the motorbike, <laughs> piki piki. <laughs> now I'm going to drive my own big car, I'm going to take all my family there. Mm -hmm. So going to America was really, 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 mm -hmm. 
uh, exciting mm-hmm. before yeah. I went there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you went. And then I went. Uh-huh. Hey, America, yo. We took a ground. Let me just say that the first culture shock I got was in the aeroplane. Mm-hmm. It was Fly Emirates. Mm-hmm. And all the food that was served mm-hmm. was nothing I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> I don't know whether they were serving me with snacks. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> But I couldn't eat. Uh-huh. The whole 24 hours. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what in the world? Uh-huh. What the... Mm? Uh-huh. <clears throat> so I just uh, vomiliad, I persevered all the way, you know. 24 hours? 24 hours no flight. Food. No food. Because I didn't know anything uh-huh. that they were serving me. Mm-hmm. I've never seen it in my life. Mm-hmm. I don't even know the, what they were. I can't tell you what they were serving mm-hmm. me. So, um, when we got to Houston, Texas, mm. there was this guy in the airplane who said, Welcome to the United States of America. I was like, Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I'm yeah, in America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. So, um, I was really happy. And then I was held at the airport. Mm-hmm. The second culture shock, like, Why are you going to Little Rock, Arkansas? And yet, you have visa says you're going to Silver Spring, Maryland. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have a phone, so I could not uh, call the mm-hmm. school mm-hmm. to ask them, why am I going to Arkansas? Mm-hmm. And my visa says I'm going to Silver Spring, Maryland, which is mm-hmm. a totally different state. Mm-hmm. So I just remember that I was sat at the airport until I missed my flight. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. I missed my flight from Houston, Texas mm-hmm. to Arkansas. Mm-hmm. Eventually, some African-American just said, go, 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 go. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a racism, so that a black mm-hmm. person helped me. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, I was already at the verge of even being deported. Wow. Oh, before I entered, yeah. Mm-hmm. Before I was so admitted. you actually just fled? Yeah, just mm-hmm. African-American just told me, just go and board your plane. Mm-hmm. But I was, there were many people who were on hold and I was on hold there for a while. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when I eventually landed in uh, Arkansas, mm-hmm. the people who had come to pick me up mm-hmm. had already left and mm-hmm. went back to the school. Mm-hmm. Oh no. I didn't have their phone number, I didn't know anything to do, so I was at the airport at least eight hours. Yeah, just sitting there, wondering like, oh my God, now what am I going to do next? Mm-hmm. And uh, an African-American lady eventually came and mm-hmm. talked to me, said, uh, where are you from? I said, I'm from Kenya. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. She was jumping and shaking me and like, oh, you're from the motherland. You're from the motherland. Oh, That's why I'm not sure it's called motherland. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. It's not just her place and it's called motherland. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah. the African-American lady was like, welcome to America. Oh my God, I love Africans. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, thank you. But I was a bit scared because she was calling me all honey, sweetheart, mm-hmm. darling. Because where are you, I, I, I'm a village girl. <laughs> <laughs> now is somebody calling me honey. Am I your honey now? Was <laughs> 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 you at ease? At ease, at ease. That is what I'm used to. Now, so not honey, darling, sweetheart, and you're another woman. Are you lesbian now? What? Uh-huh. Eventually, the lady uh, said she wanted to buy for me something, mm-hmm. and the shock was also the prices. Mm-hmm. You know what you don't understand when you're coming from Kenya to America mm-hmm. is that everything is different. The food is different, mm-hmm. the prices is different, the culture is different, mm-hmm. everything is totally different. The weather is different, the time is different. So you get even confused. Is it daytime or is it nighttime? Mm-hmm. So um, this lady paroled through through all my papers and she, until she found uh, the phone number. Mm-hmm. And she called the school, she told them I was there, and they came to pick me up. And that mm-hmm. took another four hours. Mm-hmm. My goodness. I was four hours from Little Rock Airport. Oh. Yeah, okay. Little Rock Airport is where I landed. Mm-hmm. So uh, they came to pick me up in a big van, mm-hmm. but I really had no belongings. I had just my uh, passport. They thought you had traveled. <laughs> <laughs> like in the way you go, Mendat. Mendat, Mendat, by the way. Mm-hmm. Just a few clothes that were donated by some mamas from mm-hmm. Nairobi Church, mm-hmm. where they raised money for my air ticket. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have much mm-hmm. belongings. Mm-hmm. So um, I was wondering as we were traveling, why is it taking so long? Mm-hmm. And, and why is, is it like we are going back to Kabura village Mm -hmm. because the road from Little Rock to Mm -hmm. where I was Mm -hmm. this somewhere called Madison, Arkansas Mm -hmm. we left the Tamak road and into the Maram road and into finally Mm -hmm. the school Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so upon arrival I found some uh, white students and Hispanic students and it wasn't um, 
it wasn't bad because they welcomed me mm-hmm. with open arms mm-hmm. and it took a while to get used to mm-hmm. all this mm-hmm. yes if i fast 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 forward my story mm-hmm. to uh, it, it turned out that there was really no school mm-hmm. that the scholarship was actually a scam <laughs> what what yeah mm-hmm. and i just had to sell books and magazines door to door that's what they wanted you to do right but what? i thought i was going to do that during the summer and then uh, after summer i was going to school mm-hmm. but after summer we had to go again mm-hmm. they said now you have to knock on people's doors and ask if they want bible study mm-hmm. so i was like hi do you want bible study mm-hmm. no <laughs> cuz you will say no <laughs> so after the after the bible study we had to go back again to another church we were living inside the churches we were no longer in the school mm-hmm. Even those other students. Um, there was actually a, a, like a primary school mm-hmm. that was functional, mm-hmm. but the other people, the uh, college mm. students, they were all living in the church. So that. there's no school. <laughs> there was no school. Even for them, eh? Even for them, there was no school. What? What? Yeah, I believe that the immigration has already shut down the place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some people are recently asking me, how can I get to the school that took you to America? Mm. You can just Google, it's called Wachita Hills College. Mm. Yeah, so if you want, you can find it from there. Mm-hmm. So uh, one day I was selling books door to door and I met a missionary lady. Mm-hmm. The missionary lady uh, noted my accent mm-hmm. and invited me to her place. Mm-hmm. And she told me to tell her the truth, what was going on. Mm-hmm. And I told her um, I wasn't happy, I wanted to go to school, but I wasn't going to school. Mm-hmm. So she said, okay, I'm going to steal you at night. Mm-hmm. And true to her word, she came at night mm-hmm. and she stole me. Mm-hmm. And that was the end of me with Washita Hills. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So onwards, we are moving to... There is a new chapter now. A new chapter now, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so and initially life wasn't so bad because eventually you entered and became a nurse mm-hmm. and you were earning a bit of money right. your life was okay kidogo, kidogo, you were cluing yourself to the American dream right, right, right yeah, how was maybe that experience before you even now go to where things now went south okay uh-huh. so I uh, decided to study certified nursing assistant course mm-hmm. and it's like a six month course mm-hmm. and I got certified mm-hmm to work with the old people mm-hmm. in the nursing homes in the assisted livings and in the in their homes mm-hmm. home health care mm-hmm. so um, the first nursing home mm-hmm. that i worked at mm-hmm. uh, most of the patients really loved me mm-hmm. just a very funny story one day mm-hmm. i was wearing a wig mm-hmm. <laughs> and there was this man who was really 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 old mm-hmm. And he had never spoken to anybody mm-hmm. for over six months. Everybody thought he was going to die. Mm-hmm. So I used to just go, you just go, you, if you clean them, you brush their teeth, all that. And he never spoke, he never spoke to the nurses. He had no family visiting him. He had no doctors visiting him. So one day I took him some food. food. No, I went to clean his room. Mm-hmm. And as I was bending this way, my wig fell down. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. The guy laughed. <laughs> Imagine this a guy who's not spoken for over six months. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. He laughed so loud. He was like, Young lady, that's not your hair. <laughs> I've been seeing you all along. Uh-huh. I thought that was your hair. Like all the nurses came running, like what's going on? Uh-huh. Like they were hearing noise. They thought I was maybe doing uh-huh. something bad to the guy. Uh-huh. And they were like, "What, uh, Mister? So and so, you are talking?" <laughs> and she's like, "This young lady, she's so funny. She's laughing nonstop. She's like, <laughs> I always thought that was her hair." Wig is not a respectable person. <laughs> You the Nanguka boy. We did in Nanguka US hospital, the man. Oh my god. <laughs> but after that day, the man started talking to me every day now. He was like, How are you? Yeah, is this your real hair now? And he would talk to other people. So, really, the wig falling down was uh, like a therapy to him. Yeah, it was a therapy to him. So, um, 
Ako pa rin. More of the story. Eh. Eh. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, there was also another lady there mm-hmm. in the nursing home, mm-hmm. just a really old lady, mm-hmm. and she always used to tell me, uh, you should buy an American car. You know, I didn't have a car at that time. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I used to tell her, I, what's her name? Mm-hmm. Uh, let's say Miss, 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 Miss Hodge, well, yeah? Uh-huh. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Miss Hodge, I, I want to buy a car. Really? Mercy? You know, you know she's really old, you know, this really old white lady. Really? You want a car? Mm-hmm. And I'll be like, yeah, which car do you want? I want uh, like a Toyota. No, 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 no. Don't buy those Japanese cars. You should buy American car. Buy a Dodge. I should <laughs> like tell me all the American cars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just buy American cars. Mm-hmm. So many people are really friendly, but there were some people who are really mean. Mm-hmm. This lady would be like, don't touch me, nigga. Don't touch me. Oh, no. I would be like, what is nigga? <laughs> you oh, know. Yeah. But nigga is a way that they insult. Uh, is, yeah, yeah, that is, it just means cotton picker. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, no, no. Akata means cotton picker. Mm-hmm. You know, when you go there, <laughs> your man, God forgive me. If you're an African American and you're watching, see mm-hmm. what We always call um, African Americans Akata. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, she called me nigga, and I didn't know what the heck nigga, nigga meant, but I knew she doesn't want me to touch her. Mm-hmm. So I didn't touch her. So I worked there, and that's where I bought my first car. It was a Dodge Neon. I bought an wow. American so car. You finally bought the American car. Yeah, <laughs> I bought a Dodge Neon white in color. So really how did you pretty. feel to finally drive your own car? Oh, it was really good. In the streets good. of America. Yeah, uh-huh. in the streets of America. I would uh-huh. really go for long drives. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. with my boyfriend. Hey! hey. 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 <laughs> I left Kenya when I was a virgin, mm-hmm. by the way. Mm-hmm. So um, I had my first boyfriend in America, and he was a Mzungu. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so um, you are leaving the complete package. Yeah? I was leaving you the complete, a complete package. Yeah, now I'm driving. Driving a, 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 a Dodge American Neon. Car. Yeah. You have an American boyfriend. Yes. Okay. Hey. 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 Earning dollars. Like, earning dollars. Life was good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah so. Uh, I stayed in Arkansas until mm-hmm. somebody told me to move to Texas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, move to Texas. But then I got my driving driving license in Arkansas. Mm-hmm. I got my social security card in Arkansas. Mm-hmm. Like Arkansas, really, kind of I can say favored me. Yeah, because their life is a bit slow mm-hmm. compared to the rest of the US, mm-hmm. and um, it wasn't too bad. So why, one, huh? so why did you move to Texas? I moved to Texas saying? because uh-huh. there were very few Kenyans in Arkansas. Uh-huh. And so I was missing Kenyans. Can you okay. imagine that? Uh-huh. You miss Kenyans? Can you miss Kenyans? <laughs> I was like, no, I want to meet a big Kenyan community. So I was told, if you want a big Kenyan community, Texas, just yeah. go to Texas. Mm-hmm. There's even a university in Dallas called University of Nairobi. Mm-hmm. Because there are so many students Oh. From uh, Kenya, Kenya mm-hmm. who are who are going there. Okay. So I moved to Dallas. I was uh, looking for this community, looking for somewhere to belong to. Mm-hmm. And um, you still working? Yeah, I was working. Now still at a, a, as a nursing home. I found an, an, another job. Mm-hmm. Those jobs are really easy to find mm-hmm. in the US, mm-hmm. and many Kenyans always do them. Mm-hmm. I found a job and. Um, I was working actually at the time three jobs mm-hmm. in a nursing home, mm-hmm. assisted living, mm-hmm. and I was working for Boost Mobile Company, mm-hmm. which is like Safaricom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I would go to church, uh, all nations SDA church in mm-hmm. Arlington, Texas, mm-hmm. and I really met a large Kenyan community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but so I, you really found what you were looking for? I didn't find what I was looking for because mm-hmm. even the Kenyans they were not as friendly and as receptive as I had imagined, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm, It's different for Nigerians. Nigerians, when they go overseas Mm -hmm. and there's a newcomer, they really welcome you. Mm -hmm. They take a hold of you. They show you the steps. Now do this and this and this and this. Mm -hmm. But for Kenya, eh. Mm -hmm. We would not have an iron packer, my juke. Kill them to a dipang. Kill them to a dipang. You are on your own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I really hope that that will change in time. Mm-hmm. So I left Dallas, Texas, because I still didn't feel like I, I was at home. Yeah. I was looking for something I couldn't find. Mm-hmm. And I moved to New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Why New Jersey? New Jersey because there was a lady there mm-hmm. who was modeling. Uh-huh. Yeah. A challenging lady, mm-hmm. Moni, Monica Songok. Mm-hmm. 
and she welcomed me to stay with her mm-hmm. and she would teach me how to do the modeling. You know, in the US, if you are really dark, dark, dark like me, mm-hmm. it's a good thing. Okay. You can model. Mm-hmm. It's like when you okay. go somewhere. <laughs> 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 But Jasmine is a little light. You have to be dark, 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 dark. Darker than me. You have to be dark. Remember, light skin. Gonna matter. Be a man. Be a girl. Okay. Yeah. So when I would go for the modeling auditions, they would be like, "Wow, wow." So you actually audition to be a model, and you got it. I got some gigs. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I got some gigs and then I got a job at Macy's. Mm-hmm. Macy's is like a clothing store. Mm-hmm. No. It's not just a clothing, but clothing, jewelry. It's a really big, 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 big store. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I was really excited because at Macy's store, uh, they they offered me a permanent job immediately. You know, in the US, they put huh? you on 90-day... Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Contract. Yeah, mm-hmm. first 90 days to observe you, and then you can get permanent or you can get fired. Mm-hmm. So just the way that I went for the interview, the way I talked with them, mm-hmm. they offered me a higher salary mm-hmm. and, a, and a permanent position. Wow. Hey. Yeah. Pesa o tas. Pesa o tas. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so New Jersey also started favoring you. Yeah, New Jersey started favoring me. Mm-hmm. But New Jersey was, it got to winter time. New Jersey is really cold. Mm-hmm. New Jersey, New York, Washington, D.C., the East Coast. Mm-hmm. It gets really cold. Like, I just don't mean cold. It's mm-hmm. snowing. Mm-hmm. Even if you drive mm-hmm. for one meter, mm-hmm. uh, the snow just comes and covers your windscreen. Mm-hmm. And then you have to come out in the cold and scratch it out. Mm-hmm. Scratch it out and then... You start driving again and another snow comes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I didn't like the weather. Mm-hmm. So you moved again? I moved again. Mm-hmm. I moved again to California now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now California I was moving to Hollywood. Hey. <laughs> hey. My <time>. okay. <laughs> I was moving to Hollywood because uh-huh. I also wanted to be on the big screens, you know. I like wow. watching the movies. Mm-hmm. There's a movie that my favorite movie is called Dream Girls. Mm-hmm. It's with Beyonce, Jennifer Hudson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a musical movie. If you haven't seen it, maybe you should check it out. Okay. Yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so now you really now went to. No, pursue. Now you wanted not to do a bit of acting. Right, I want to do acting. My friend, eh? Yeah, I was mm-hmm. very ambitious. Mm-hmm. I want to do acting, I want to do singing, I want to do modeling, mm-hmm. I want to be in the industry. Showbiz, yes. yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I wanted in the showbiz. And mm-hmm. the showbiz is most popular in Hollywood. Yes. Oh, Hollywood yeah. is the yeah, capital. Yeah, yeah. Also New York, mm-hmm. New York City, but Sana Sana Hollywood. Mm-hmm. So I remember arriving in Hollywood, uh, Inglewood to be specific, mm-hmm. Inglewood, California. Mm-hmm. And by the way, something shocked me. So many homeless Kenyans in wow. California. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, just sleeping on the streets, mm-hmm. lost on drugs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, government officials, their mm-hmm. kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't mention, but um, that was like a big shock mm-hmm. in California. I remember talking to some people, some guys, they were like, Yeah, I'm in Kenya, my bangu ni mkubwa, my bangu ni mkubwa, my bangu ni uliwa Kenya. And since then, they took all our wealth, and now I'm just here on the streets. I'm homeless. Eh, I'm in Kenya, and I'm going to Kiswahili. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was really shocking. Mm-hmm. But little did I know that I would also end up homeless. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. So, California is tough, and mm-hmm. if you are coming from Kenya, mm-hmm. uh, I wouldn't advise mm-hmm. that you go to California. I mean, unless you have somebody there. Mm-hmm. And, and somebody who is not going to change their mind mm. the next day, yeah. In the U.S., uh, if you're not working like 16 hours a day, mm-hmm. it's really hard to keep up. 16 hours? 16 hours. Just to support your lifestyle. To, to support your lifestyle, mm-hmm. yeah. And, so you're not even working to be rich, just to survive? Just to survive. So you didn't get a job there, what happened? I got a job, mm-hmm. again, for CNA, nursing home. Mm-hmm. Now, at this time, I've been in the U.S. for like two years. Yes. Yeah. 
and I'm, I'm now in California, I started taking care of all the people in their homes now, mm -hmm. not in the nursing home. Because okay. the nursing homes, there was so much racism mm -hmm. in the nursing home, so much discrimination. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm going to do home health care. Mm -hmm. So I remember I stayed with this old lady for a while until one day, uh, she was watching CNN news. Mm -hmm. And I just saw, uh, there's a church which has been banned in Kenya at the post election that is. Mm -hmm. Remember the 207? Yeah. yeah. And I started seeing all these, mm -hmm. People getting killed in Kenya and such as banned and children dying and I was like, what? And I just cried so hard. I tried to call home. No phone call was going through. Mm. And this is something I've not said in any of my interviews. Mm. That uh, I tried to call home and, and no call was going through. Mm -hmm. So I kept calling, I kept calling my sister, my brother. No call was going through. Mm -hmm. Remember, my brother died at Baraton University, mm -hmm. but now I have one brother left. Mm -hmm. I had one brother left who uh, worked for uh, Moy Air Force. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it called? Works for the Air Force mm -hmm. at Isili. Moy Air Base. Moy Air Base, yes, oh. in Isili. Mm -hmm. So eventually, my sister's boyfriend calls me mm -hmm. and is like, Ben, I'm a cat, a cat, a panga. Ben is your brother. Ben is my, my oldest brother. Mm -hmm. And I just lost it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I lost it completely. Mm -hmm. I hung up the phone mm -hmm. and I went like I wanted to kill myself. Because I was like, how now? Mm -hmm. You know, my mother has just died. Mm -hmm. My brother followed. Mm -hmm. I have one brother left. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mungiki, I've cut my brother. And what is amazing, mm -hmm. The people who cut my brother's head, mm -hmm. they were his own neighbors. So um, I started crying. I was going to, uh, this time I was in Santa Monica, California. Mm -hmm. I remember going to the beach and I was just crying out of this world. Mm -hmm. And I told my friend, I used to have a friend named Jackie, mm -hmm. and she lived in Delaware. Mm -hmm. uh, she called me and I said, my brother, me katwa katwa. And she said, Marcy, don't lose hope. Maybe he didn't die. You know, cause me the moment I had I make a kwa kwa kichwa na panga, I, ot automatically I knew. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I said, Jackie, Jackie, he can't be alive. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they killed him. Mm -hmm. Jackie said, Give me your family's phone number. I want to call. Mm -hmm. I gave her, and they told me my brother is not dead yet, mm -hmm. but he's at uh, the hospital mm -hmm. in in Moy Air Base. Mm -hmm. He's being treated. Mm -hmm. So that was like a relief. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I kept calling, calling, calling. Now I was calling the airbase direct. The airbase, their gate. You know, they get there at Isili. And that phone call was going through. Until I said, I'm in the US, you know, my brother is sick, I'm a katwana mungiki. I just want uh, to see if he's okay. Eventually I talked with my brother, but then my brother is still alive to date. Oh, thank wow. God. Yeah, uh -huh. thank God. So I think also part of my brother's attack messed me up, mm -hmm. you know, mentally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I stopped working the nursing home jobs. Now I just started... You stopped? I stopped. Mm -hmm. I started working, uh, I, I started, uh, I became homeless. I ended up being homeless. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you work to work? Didn't you want to continue working? Or the um, will to work was not there anymore? I lost the will mm -hmm. of uh, cleaning people's poops, adult mm -hmm. poops. Mm -hmm. and being discriminated against. Mm -hmm. And I know uh, it's a source of income, mm -hmm. but I wanted to uh, pursue mm -hmm. the Something entertainment bigger. yeah, the entertainment industry. Okay. So when I quit working, I got a job, another job, at Universal Studios Hollywood. Mm -hmm. hey. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I got a job at Universal Studios Hollywood. Mm -hmm. and, um, what were you doing there? I was working like a, an assistant tour guide, mm -hmm. tour guide, yeah. Mm -hmm. Working in the trams, there you go, and then they take you like, hi, welcome to Universal Studios Hollywood. My name is Marcy, I'm gonna be your tour guide today. So you, the, the tram goes around and they're talking and they're telling everybody where yeah, they should be big yeah, movies, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was a fun job for me. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. At least you felt this is where I, I want to be. Part of right, right, like I'm getting closer. Mm -hmm. So um, 
as I continued living in Hollywood, mm-hmm. um, I became very vulnerable. Mm-hmm. At one point, I can say also very desperate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a young woman. I was really young by then. I went to America when I was just 18. Mm-hmm. So now you're 20, yeah? Yeah, I'm like 20. Mm-hmm. And I'm... Uh, trying to chase dreams, Mm -hmm. and I have no family, and I I don't know really the direction. Um, I ended up like really uh, making some wrong decisions. Yeah, I ended up making some wrong decisions, like um, I would post an ad on this website called Craigslist and say I'm looking for a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to marry American citizen. Because well, Craigslist even post for boyfriends. <laughs> no, they just changed that recently. Uh-huh. Yeah, they just changed oh. that. Oh, you know Craigslist? Yeah, I know it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Cra- Craigslist used to be like the, the hotbed. Yeah. It's a dating for website of sorts. It's, it's like more a, than dating, yeah. at a hookups. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> okay. uh-huh. So Craigslist used to be the thing. Okay. Yeah, but nowadays they mm. somebody sued them. Okay. Yeah. I don't know whatever happened, but they were so now it's just for jobs and whatever. Mm-hmm. And I got on uh, Craigslist several times posting an ad. Oh, I want to marry American citizen. And I would meet American citizens. And they would want to marry me. But then that SDA upbringing. <laughs> mm-hmm. the, strict, the strict SDA upbringing, yeah. 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 I remember meeting a guy who really, really was interested in me, but he had long hair. You know, these were Zungus with long hair mm-hmm. on a ponytail. Mm-hmm. And I said, the Bible says a man should have short hey, hair. Hey, yeah, I know. That is. Will you watch a boy? That's also the one I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. The Bible says a woman can have long hair, but a man should cut his hair short. Uh-huh. <laughs> These are some of my regrets, by the way. Uh-huh. The guy really liked me, and he had one daughter, mm. a Mzungu daughter, yeah? Mm. And I was also scared mm. that the Mzungu daughter would discriminate against me. Mm. Like, how am I going to be a Mzungu's mom? Maybe just any mama can Mzungu. Mm. <laughs> He was a dad, single dad. What you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a single dad and he wanted to marry me, but I just I turned him down. Mm-hmm. And then again, mm-hmm. one day in Las Vegas, yeah? Mm-hmm. Las Vegas, hey, Nevada. As a man in Las Vegas. Hey. 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 And the first time I went to Las Vegas, uh-huh. um, there was this guy who works on Wall Street. Mm-hmm. You know, really rich mm-hmm. guy. Mm-hmm. He was like 45. Mm-hmm. I'm like 20. Mm-hmm. He was really, really, really serious about, you know, wanting to marry me. Mm-hmm. But I was like, the Bible says. Ah, uh, Marasi. <laughs> what does the Bible say about age? Tell us. <laughs> Actually, I simply rejected him because of his age. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I had to give it to nineteen. It's a end of an attack. If you are a Muzongo and you are breathing, if you are breathing, I don't care if I have to wipe your pupus. Oh my God! Not a cock or more than a dozen. What do you want to breathe? <laughs> and then I was like, he's 45, I'm 20. How I now? Uh-huh. It's not possible. Yeah. But now I'm regretting. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. So those are some lost opportunities. He's coming. Yeah. Yeah. Coming. yeah, he's coming. Huh? Mm-hmm. This year, 2021. Yeah, 2021 is your year. 2021, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the year of lesson, lesson. Go out. You need to come <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. <coughs> That's right. By the way, I like Justina. Mm-hmm. So cow, yeah. Mm-hmm. She's fun. You know, I remember to be 20 and Limba. I don't know if I'm going to be 21. I'm going to be less than less. Less than less, yeah. 
Unajua ni baile song yangu ya let it fly angesema let it fly let it fly Jemukamba Ah ina shida So anyway another guy gone like that Mhm And what are you doing in Las Vegas were you like Oh, you so want much. to know what yes, I was doing in Las Vegas? You know they say what happens in Las, Las Vegas, Vegas stays, stays in Vegas. What if the Las Vegas comes after me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it stays there. <laughs> so, hmm. at one point, mm-hmm. I started to strip dance in a club yeah for dancing kabisa in hollywood yeah uh-huh. i know how to pull that the way you want me to demonstrate you can do that you want me to demonstrate you know. hey you can do that i'm the best now <laughs> and i don't i don't give a damn i don't give a damn 